What is up everybody? Welcome back to another episode on the channel. If this is your first time stopping in, you wanna learn a little bit more about trucks, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Let's go ahead and get started right into the video. We're gonna go ahead and install this transfer case on my 2007 Chevrolet Duramax, and this is a uh, 2500 HD four wheel drive, Allison, so on and so forth. So pretty much similar to really any process in on installing a transfer case. So what I will say is this will be a one man job. I'm going to install it. Yes, I'm gonna muscle it myself. I'm not gonna use a jack. I know what you guys are gonna say in the comments. I'm still young, so you know, I'm gonna go ahead and just use that. This by far is the best transfer case rebuild ever made in the world. I'm just gonna say it right now. I've done a lot of research. I've came to that conclusion, so I'm gonna stick with it. You can see the efficiency of this thing by me spinning. We actually take our hub, bore it, and add three extra bearings in this case that they never had in it. Now when we put this whole assembly together, we drop it on, we've got something that's dropped just an immense amount of friction out of it. Now that's just one clip right there. I don't wanna drag this video on. You guys can watch that other video. As a matter of fact, if you wanna watch that video, Go ahead and click this link right here and, uh, and educate yourself. So let's go ahead and get right to it. Go ahead and attempt to muscle this myself. The transfer case weighs about 80 pounds. At actually the packaging when I shipped it off, it was like 87 pounds or so. But it's actually easier, I think, in my mind to do this on the ground with a lifted truck than it is because I've installed dozens of transfer cases, believe it or not. I've done this before many times. And this is my first time doing it on the ground. Usually I do it with a hoist. So, and two guys in order to, but then I'm gonna be able to lay on my back and be able to put it up. I think it's gonna be a little bit easier too. It's almost pretty much like bench pressing and lining everything up. All right, boys, we are in. And by the way, here's the uh, info on that T-case. 16 millimeter nuts is actually what's gonna hold the back end of that housing to the uh, transmission. So we're gonna go ahead and put the nuts on the back end here. So yeah, it's gonna be kinda hard to get the camera back here to film this, but we're just gonna go ahead and install these nuts right now and uh, tighten everything up and then we'll go to the next step. So I got these nuts all hand tightened, but this little ratchet wrench with a swivel, that is gonna save your life. So if you guys can pick one of these up right here, it'd be great. This is gonna be a 15 millimeter around this housing. It's gonna be six nuts. So let's go ahead and start working on that. As you guys can see what I'm talking about, the angle is amazing. I think the hardest one that you're, you guys are gonna have an issue with is where is it at? It's this guy right here. Because you do have this cross member underneath the transfer case. And that's going to be in the way. The easiest way to get access back there is to jack up your transmission. And I just have like a 2x6 so I'm not hurting anything. Just jack it up. That way you can get some clearance. That way you can get some clearance to get that last nut on the very bottom. That's going to be the hardest part right there. But you'll have enough access underneath in order to slide this nut in there and then use your and then use your little flex head combination open end wrench right here to get up in there to actually tighten it down. Easiest way to do it. All right, now I'm just lining up my cross member mounting bracket. I'll just leave that loose for now and then I'll go ahead and put the nuts that sit underneath here, drive those in and then we'll put this cross member back on. I do that, there's two nuts right here that connected to these studs right here that go underneath this cross member. Those are 16 millimeter, and after that, I'll go ahead and put this cross member back on. It's actually just sort of sitting up on the frame right here for right now. I'll go ahead and bolt that back up, and we should be good with the framing. And I can let that jack down.
Now before you install your nuts on this side, right here where these studs are, make sure you guys install your bracket back on there. Your hold down bracket for your wiring harnesses. Alright, this is the wiring harness that goes to your shift motor. Go ahead and plug that in. Here's the wiring harness that goes to your speed sensor. Go ahead and plug that in until it clips in nice and tight. So you're good there. And then you got this little clip up here you want to reattach right here and you should be good to go. Oh yeah, and the vent tube. Make sure you, you install your vent tube as well. It goes to the top of it. And those, that should be it for all your wiring harnesses. Guys, I'm just going to use some good old GM axle grease for these splines on this front drive shaft. And I'm going to do it for the rear as well. So really all I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean up any sort of debris that's on the end of this. As you guys can see with these splines right here, go ahead and just get it in there. Um, make sure it sits in all the way and then put your little rubber boot over it and you should be good to go there. So next we're going to go ahead and replace the slip yoke in the U-joint right here. We're going to go ahead and take this out. I'm not going to use one of those fancy tools. I'm going to use a hammer. Squeeze the two together and try to pry it out. Some of these are really, really stubborn to get out. But as you can see, you're able to pop these out right out, no problem. And then we'll go ahead and do the other side right now. All right. If that does not work, I recommend doing something like that. Go ahead and torch it, make that metal soft, pop it off that way. All right, next we're going to go ahead and find a socket that fits the inside of that. I like, I'll just use a deep socket. Um, what size is that? That fits perfectly. That's a 22. So we'll go ahead and put this on the vise, and we are going to pound it through. All right, guys, I did that, and in my case, the cap popped out off the bottom. As you guys can see right here, this cap just popped off. So that was, this U-joint's actually in pretty good shape, but while we're at it, we might as well replace them. I've never replaced these U-joints. All right. And as you guys can see, it broke loose. Too easy right there it is that's how you do it guys okay so let's go ahead and prepare the slip yoke now this is a spicer u-joint these are great because they're non-greasable there's no grease circ in them the needle bearings inside of them they're very very small you gotta be very careful you don't want these things to roll out as you guys can see, there's little needle bearings inside of there. So just be careful of that. Like such. And then once you've done that, go ahead and just put your cap through. And the same on this side. Go ahead and seat it in there. Alright. And there you go. That's how you install that to the yoke, and then we're gonna go ahead and install this to the actual drive shaft. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take my needle bearing cap from the old one. I'm just gonna press that side in. What I went ahead and did, guys, is I just 
stuck that existing cap right in there reset that down until i can get to that little groove that's inside this little uh, cylinder right here and we're going to go ahead and sink in that safety clip so let's go ahead and do that like such and it'll sit right in there and we'll go ahead and flip it around do the other side we're going to do all four sides just like that so now that we have the drive shaft done the very next thing i'm going to do is install my transmission brace i need to spray paint that right there So pretty much all I'm going to go ahead and do is just lubricate these splines with the uh, with the grease. And then go ahead and tighten these things up with the 10 millimeter ratchet and you should be good to go. And there you have it guys, slip yoke, U-joint, transfer case, all installed, drive shaft, not that hard of a job, just kind of time consuming, but we got it in. I have not started the truck yet, I'm beat, I'm actually dead tired right now, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this video tomorrow now, I'm going to go ahead and get out, I'm going to pull the truck out of the garage. You guys let me know if you want my wife to fill up the transfer case with oil. So I think that'd be fun. I'm not sure if she's willing to do that or not, but we'll see. So I got, I'm going to put fluid in it tomorrow. I'll post a video very shortly on that, guys. So make sure you stay tuned. Then we're going to go ahead and do a test drive. And I'm going to let you guys know what I think. So that's it. I will see you on the next video. This is going to be a lot of fun. Take care.